Good evening. My name is Carrie Hans, and I am currently a volunteer with Raptor Recovery Nebraska. When I was contacted by Ignite Lincoln, they wanted to know, what are you passionate about? And this is what I do. I've been doing it for a number of years and truly enjoy working with the birds of prey. Our organization started back in 1976, so we've been going 36 years strong, grassroots, volunteer-based. And we take care of the hawks and the owls and the eagles and the falcons, the birds of prey that come through Nebraska. Rehabilitation is probably the biggest part of what we do, taking in the sick and the injured, the orphaned, the young birds that come into our center that need help. Many times an injury may be a simple fracture. Uh, sometimes we need x-rays to see where the breaks are, how badly those wings are broken, what we can do to repair them. Sometimes it's just a matter of a wrap, sometimes it's a matter of intervention with medical volunteers here in the state. Many times a blood draw is required when these birds come in. They may be sick with parasites, they may be sick with a disease such as West Nile virus, and only through blood draws can we determine this type of thing. Parasites are an interesting aspect. We're constantly learning and this last year we had a golden eagle come in that actually had an ocular larval migraine within its eye. So it had a parasite just floating through its optical area. External parasites are a little easier to handle. Um, the snowy owls that migrated into our state last year during the eruption year, hundreds were spotted here in the state, 16 came to our center. Most of them had external parasites, mites and things. Those can be addressed with just a simple spray or dusting. Of the four birds that survived, we actually were able to release two of them up to Canada. They went through the Raptor Center up in Minnesota first, and then they were taken to the border. We're lucky Nebraska has such a diverse array of birds of prey. We get them from the surrounding states as well, but we handle on a yearly basis anywhere from three to 600 birds. And of those, we get over 50% of them released back into the wild, which is considered a very good national average. Education makes up a large portion of what we do. Coming out to the general public, talking to you about the importance of these birds, what they do for us in an agricultural state like Nebraska, not only the beauty of them, these are just a few of our educational birds. They are fantastic avian ambassadors for us. My bird of choice, and I feel very out of my element this evening because I would always be with a bird on my arm. This is Halsey. Halsey is our educational great horned owl. He has been with me since April of 1997. This bird in the wild could live to be 20, but in captivity, he could live to be 60 years old. I might have to will him to somebody. But tours are a big part of our educational aspect as well. Our center is based out near Elmwood, Nebraska. And for members, we are able to set up tours so that you can come out and see our facilities, see what we do on a regular basis. Conservation makes up a big portion of what we do. We used to actually maintain the kestrel boxes, which you see here. We used to have them on the back of the interstate signs between Lincoln and Seward. And we would go out and monitor those throughout the nesting season. Got a little dicey when that uh, speed went up to 75 on the interstate, so we don't do that any longer. But we have been the recipient of numerous awards due to our efforts to rehabilitate and repair injured birds. Young falcons are a common sight for us every spring. Kestrels, merlins, and even the peregrine falcons. The peregrines are the birds that are in such notoriety both at the Woodman Tower in Omaha and at our own state capitol building here in Lincoln. They always make it in the papers. There's always a naming contest every year. They're never very happy the day we come to ban them. I just don't understand why. We're poking them, we're prodding them, we're taking blood out of them, we're dusting them, and we ban them. With the game and parks, we ban these birds so that if they are ever found again, we'll know how far they've traveled, how far they've gone, how long they've been out in the wild. We can monitor our success with these creatures. Working with Eagle Scouts throughout the state, many a project has been done thanks to these young men and their willingness to work with us on building structures and helping us with our birds of prey. Many times people will ask us, doesn't it hurt, aren't you saddened the day that you have to release a bird? No, that's what it's all about. 
to be able to return these magnificent creatures back to their natural world. This is an immature bald eagle, and boy, a day of release. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than that. I thoroughly enjoy my volunteer work. I couldn't ask for a more rewarding experience. Mild-mannered postal clerk by day, raptor recover at night.